Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is John Hammond. I'm coming back at you with another video for Natus, this time level 12, uh, as part of the Over the Wire War Games, looking at web application security. So what we're greeted with here in this level is what looks like some file upload functionality. Uh, the prompt here is choose a JPEG to upload, a JPEG file, a JPEG image. Um, and I poked around with this a little bit. I gave it some like default files that I had, like something I had saved from like a Python challenge video or something. Whenever I would try and upload this, it wouldn't actually work. I don't know why. It says there's an up error uploaded in the file. Please try again. Um, whatever. So we can get back to the page and we can view the source, like the same kind of functionality all the other levels have had for us. Um, but let's take a look at this in Sublime Text or in our editor so we can see it with syntax highlighting and it looks pretty good. So I've got the same like skeleton code I've had before, the username and password we're using, requests and regular expressions to scrape stuff out, and I just make get requests to the page. So here we can see it. Uh, let's set the syntax to like HTML, whatever. Um, and now we can go to that view source, like index source uh, page. Cool. All right, that's kind of messy. So let's deentitize it just like we've been doing before. And there are a ton of break characters that aren't really important for some reason. So we can see the PHP code behind this application. And it looks like, just looking at the original HTML for us, we have a form that's doing a multi-part form data. So it's able to take in files. And it looks like there are hidden values that get posted along with the request. Maximum file size, maybe we can tinker with that. Um, a file name looks like it is actually going to be using a function called gen random string, or I'm assuming generate a random string, and it just tacks on a JPEG extension here, and then it lets it actually allows us to browse to a file with that file uh, input type, and the variable name is uploaded file. So we can upload that, and maybe it will happen, or maybe it won't. Let's see why our previous one didn't work. It looks like it declares a bunch of functions up top in the PHP code, but the actual uh, logic right now to start with is to testing if a file name exists in the post request. So if we actually post it to the form, to the form, sorry, to the web page, um, it gets a target path based off of make random path from file name, upload, and the post file name. So make random path from file name looks like another function that we have here, and that takes in a directory which we know is just upload right now. We can see that string, and I'm assuming fn for file name, so the post file name that it gets here. And in the function, we run this ext variable. Looks like it's running PHP function path info, getting out, I'm assuming, the extension, or the file type extension for the file name that we pass in. And it looks like by default it's JPEG, but we can probably change that uh, if we get in the middle of it. And then it will return make random path on this and make random path looks like another function here where it will create a path over and over again with a random string until the file does not exist. So while the file exists, that path, it will keep creating a new one over and over again. It'll keep trying to generate a new random string until it hits something that it hasn't randomly gotten before. And generate random string, that function up top just looks like it creates a, uses all the letters and numbers lowercase, um, grabs a random one 10 times and puts it together to create a random string. So it must be creating a random file name. And we could see that even in the source code if we wanted to. Like when we zoomed in, uh, took a look at that file name input in the HTML. It is a random file name if I keep refreshing this page. But by default, it always has a JPEG value, but it looks like that functionality in the PHP code actually keeps track of the extension that is given. So what if we were to give it something that wasn't a JPEG image? Like what if we were to give it PHP code that it could actually execute? Uh, let's try that. I guess let's find out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. And that can be just a simple PHP reverse shell. So I have this already saved as rev shell from some previous testing, but it'll just have our PHP open and close tags, and we will echo out the system output of um, our get request C, and C can just be the variable that we want to have here. And I think echo will also display it while system already does to begin with, so we can probably just run system get C. And let's just do that experiment to see if it will display it out on the screen for us. So let's try that. 
Um, I don't know how in the request module we can upload a file, but let's go find out. We can just use some simple Google thing, Python requests, get to the documentation. Let's look for file upload, control F. Um, are we at the quick start? I want to be at the quick start. Upload. Okay, cool. So there's the documentation here. Looks like we can give in our post request all that. When we, when we make that function call, we can just give it another keyword argument files. And that's just another dictionary with the file like name, that, that, that variable name for the HTTP post. Uh, and then just an open object, like a Python file object created with the open function. So just a file name, really. Sweet. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to Sublime Text. And let's try and do a new function rather than you're running the get PHP, uh, the get HTTP method. Let's run post. Keep the auth that we need, but let's say our data, like we have for a normal uh, post call or post method, we have file name, and that can be rev shell dot PHP because we're going to try and do something other than a JPEG file, but some PHP code that we want to be able to have it execute for us. And that max file size, we'll include that just to be safe. That was by default a thousand or so, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's the data, but let's get the files in there as well, since this form that we're working with can actually interpret those A-OK. -okay. So files can equal uploaded file, and that was the variable name. If you check the source, that's what it's using to read in that variable and the HTTP method, that post request. So we want to open up our rev shell.php and the documentation said down below here, uh, try and make sure you open this in binary mode. So RB, the mode here for that file. Okay, now let's run this, see what we get. And I think I posted that to index source, so let's not do that. Now let's run this function. We have different build output. Looks like it did upload though, on that other, other page here. Let me open that source code back up, sorry. So the response was the file this location, so this must be the random string that we had given to us, .php, so it kept our extension because that's how the source code explained it, and that's been uploaded successfully. Okay, cool. So let's go to that location, and let's see if we can get it to run system commands for us, because that's what we just told PHP to do. So response can equal session.get, get the URL plus the upload and auth can build the same username and password that we've been working with all along. So now when we run this, we get some PHP notices and warnings. So notice undefined index C in this PHP. Okay, so that because that's because we didn't supply the variable and we're getting a warning because system can't execute a blank command. So that C variable, that get variable that we wanted to include, we'll have to include it now. So a question mark C, so we can denote some HTTP get variables and C will equal like, who am I? Let's run this. And we get Natus 12. Okay, so that's our user. Awesome. Looks like we have command execution. We can run ID, run this, and got output again. Perfect. Now let's try and go ahead and do the good stuff. Let's try and get or cat out the password for the next level, Natus 13. Run this, cat, etc. Natus web pass Natus 13. And we've got the password just like that. So cool. We totally just took advantage of some file upload functionality where we were able to keep our file extension and upload something that it didn't expect. Like maybe it wanted a JPEG. Just that's how the application it asked for. That's what it requested. But we gave it some PHP code 
and we're able to take advantage of that, get it to execute that, and run system commands or shell commands, stuff like you'd see in Bash. So we got remote code execution on that box. If we wanted to, we could create our own reverse shell, like through, uh, like through our Bash terminal, like create a netcat session and stuff like that. But for this RCE or remote code execution, this is just fine for us. We were able to get the password for the next level, and we can move on here. Let's go ahead and save this as Natus 13 and let's see what that level is asking for us. Cool. Now we only accept image files. Okay, so we got a similar vulnerability, or at least a, a similar task, but maybe there's something else here that we can, can work with to find a vulnerability and get remote code execution one more time. Cool. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you're enjoying these. Uh, if you are, please like the video. Maybe leave me a comment what you think, uh, what else I can do, what else you'd like to see. Share the video, tell your friends, subscribe if you'd like. And if you, thanks for watching, guys. Again, uh, hope you're enjoying these, and I'll see you in a later video.